I haven't had a gig like that in years. But you, but you built up some cojones there and, and went all the way through even though you were dying. They're hurting now. When you go into performance when you're 20, it's very different to why you stay in it when you're 40 or 50. It sounds like for Simon, part of it is going, why should I keep going? And I need a new edge. And it's like, well, I speak this whole other language. I have this whole other culture. So how can I make that work? Or how can I tap into it? Or it's like beginning again. You know, half my, half my family migrate over here. The other half stayed over there. It always makes me wonder as to, you know, who made the best choice. Who made the strongest choice? Who made the most courageous choice? The people who migrated to another country or the people who actually stayed living on the Franco and saw, and saw it through. So he's definitely got a lot of the Australian culture and at the same time he still kept very close ties to Spain and home. So he's a fun little mixed pot of nationalities. In the end you have to work out what your identity is within all that. There is one identity for you, but it may be the product of a whole mix, mixture of different things. I'm attracted to there is, is the argument of, of Bernard Smith that, that refers to Australia and New Zealand not as Australia and New Zealand but as the Antipodes and wants to suggest that the image of the Antipodes is interesting because it's a relationship rather than a place. So when you grow up in Australia, you don't grow up in Australia, you go up in, in a place that's umbilically connected to a whole bunch of other places. I felt this is my home, my one and only bit. Once we visited Spain, kind of opened my eyes a bit more in my mind. To the family and what I'm missing out on. Just have a coffee or a drink with them in here. Have you told them I'm coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Are they okay with it? Nothing big. Yeah, they're fine. Okay. They're fine. Okay. Hola! There's food that, that brings us together. We, uh, you know, because if you're a Spanish mum, let's face it, if you're a Spanish mum, you know, you always got to have 11 things going on the stove, right? Just in case the Spanish National Army drops in for lunch, <laughs> you got to be ready for that. Because they, they can cook 50,000 things and never, never write anything down, right? We're sitting there watching all the cooking shows, trying to get tips. My mum. My mum saw Jamie Oliver on television. <laughs> and all she could think to say was, oh, what, why is that boy in the kitchen? <laughs> Only one reason, his mother must be very sick. I think what must have been very difficult for Simon was coming to Australia at the age of 10 with no language, being thrust into a totally different environment, doing that in classic experience of immigrant kids, of learning language in class, not having a clue about what was going on. And at home, my parents demanded that we speak Spanish. Obviously, now I'm internally grateful, but at the time, I hated them because that, from my perspective, they were trying to stop me from integrating and that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to be another kid. I just wanted to integrate. Australia's just the familiarity that I've grown up in for the last 16 years, but then Spain's just got the comfort zone of, you know, a family that's, uh, that I know is always gonna be there for me. They're the second generation using comedy to talk about their experience and the, the challenges that they face in terms of trying to work out who they are and where they are in the world. That's quite normal, I think, but it's a good thing to say. It's only a couple of hours before my big Paramount gig and all my doubts, all my demons, all my insecurities have come back to haunt me. Very risky stuff. You lost a little bit of your passion. Panic attacks. A complete nervous breakdown. The audience can gore the comedian. I've never died in front of three million people. <laughs> Thank you.
In going back to Madrid, I did find a missing part of myself in the family that I love, in my love of the language and in performing on stage. And, and he gave me the chance to accept a lot of the bittersweet memories of my childhood and, of course, my relationship with my father. And I realised that both Melbourne and Madrid are home. Hey, dude. Ooh, how was it? Good, good. God, let's have a look at it. Wow. How's that held together? Uh, just an assortment of knots. Wow. Where's Jay? Uh -uh. I don't know. Been good. But I'm not an emo anymore, and he, he needs to change his act. Okay, listen, <laughs> emos, emos, are, um, e emos are goths that don't get enough pocket money, basically. <laughs> um, you know, they can't afford the full regard in the whole thing, so it's just, you know, it's all about the head. It's all about head. Like head, I mean, you like this. Um, and, uh, just, just imagine, this is, this, is, this is what my family's like. Just imagine, this, there's my father, my 73 year old father there. There is my 40 year old um, emo son. He's sitting there. And my, 40, my 73 year old Spanish father is watching my 40 year old painting his nails black. <laughs> you know? I can do this with a hand. We could be better at admitting that we all are migrants. Unless you're Aboriginal, you have a migrant story in your background. And people who come from an Anglo-Celtic tradition often identify as Australians and, and forget about their migrant experience, which could be two, three generations back. But it's still very much a part of who they are. And they'll often go back to their country, back to Scotland or Ireland or England to visit. Agnes Seller, who's one of my favourite philosophers, says home is where your cat is. She's got more than one home. Home is where your cat is. Which I guess is cute, isn't it? Because home is where you hang your hat. Um, but, yeah, I mean, a home's, home's where the people you love are. Uh, this is a song called Volver, which means to return, and it's about returning to the place you once belong, and once you get there, facing all your memories, the good ones and the bad ones. Volver. Yo adivino el parpadeo de las luces que a lo lejos van marcando mi retorno. Son las mismas que anunciaron con sus pálidos reflejos ondas horas de dolor. Y aunque no quise el regreso, siempre se vuelve al primer amor la quieta calle donde el eco dijo tuya es mi vida tuyo es su querer bajo el burlón mirar de las estrellas que con indiferencia hoy me ven volver 